All right, what's going on, everybody? This is Peter Renna back with another edition of Dollar Bin Digging. Now, I had taken a little bit of a break from doing the uh, Marvel Disney Plus uh, shows, and with last, uh, you know, last week I did Wanda Vision again. I'm kind of getting back in that frame of mind. So Wanda Vision is wrapping up this week, and I'm sure there'll be uh, plenty of things spinning out of that. But I'm going to look a little bit further ahead. I've already done Falcon and Winter Soldier. I've already looked a little bit ahead to Loki. And uh, while I think What If might be next, I'm going to jump that for right now, and I'm going to start looking at Hawkeye. So uh, just hang in there. I'm probably going to have to break this up into uh, two parts. Uh, I'm going to kind of look at more of like a Clint Barton more focused list, and then a Kate Bishop maybe list, uh, maybe next week or a little bit later, just because I didn't want to squeeze too much into one uh one show, and I had a, a few ideas of things you can keep an eye out for, so I figured it best to break it into two. So stick around, and we'll be right back. All right, so as I mentioned in the uh, opening there, I'm going to kind of break this uh, Hawkeye kind of list out uh, into two two ways. I'm going to kind of look today mostly at like Clint Barton, maybe some villains, uh, and some of the characters that might be appearing in the show, but kind of separating it from things that I could see, you know, more focused in on the Young Avengers and uh, Kate Bishop, because I really feel like her introduction here might lead into something you know, bigger for herself, or whether it be Young Avengers, her joining up with the team, or maybe even a spinoff show of her own. I feel like this show might introduce her, and then it's possible that these two might break off into their own, uh, you know, separate ways. If, if you know, Jeremy Renner decides to stick around and play Hawkeye for a little bit longer, which, you know, who knows? Maybe he will. But that said... I can tell by the background what I'm just first going to just quickly mention. Uh, if you haven't picked these up or if anytime you see these books in, you know, in the cheap bins, definitely grab this run of Hawkeye because I'm sure this is going to be mine for a lot of the material going forward. It's a great read. There's a fraction and uh, and then the covers by David Aja. It just great. It and uh, Hollingsworth, the, the three of them together. This is an excellent series and you really should be grabbing, you know, whatever you can find. And uh, the Extra, the later printings on these are, are just gorgeous as well. Like if you look here at issue two, there are five versions, five printings of this. And each of them, while very, very similar, kind of are really cool in their own way from uh, more of the the blank look to the second print to just that purple bluish you know, background of the third to uh, the fourth kind of still sticking with that silhouette kind of look. And then with the fifth kind of bringing back that silhouette look, but with the, with the original background a little bit. I mean, very slight differences between the five, but all five are really nice. And uh, I'd grab any of them if I could find them. And, and that's issue two. And I think issue one also had five uh, five as well. And as you see, like even some of the later printings got to, you know, the second print or third printing treatment. This is issue six, the second print that I put up here. But there's a lot a lot of great ones with this uh, purple the purplish border. So that being said, uh, let's just kind of get into our first book. Uh, so we know that uh, we're going to have Swordsman uh, showing up on this show. Now, whether he'll be dressed up in a suit uh, uh, as the Swordsman, you know, the character, I think it's Jack Duquesne, if, I, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, he, he's cast and, you know, his first appearance is an old Avengers book. This is Avengers number 19. Like, you're not going to find this in a dollar bin. But, you know, just so you know, that's the first appearance of Swordsman. If you find it, even in your shop, and you find it relatively cheap, you know, maybe you know, it's worth picking up, even in a lower grade, because, you know, we've seen what things like Red Guardian have done uh, over the last year or two. You know, ups and downs, to be sure, but if you buy something cheap enough, there will always be an opportunity for you to at least get your money back if you wanted to get out of it. But definitely keep an eye out for it, even just for your own PC, because it's, you know, it's a classic character. Now, as I said, they uh, they cast the character. Of Jack Duquesne, he's going to be on the show. Uh, most likely, they'll kind of follow some of the, uh, you know, kind of retcon type of uh, background uh, details we've gotten uh, about Hawkeye with him being one of his mentors. So I'm looking for Solo Avengers Hawkeye number one. Uh, this is still found pretty cheap, even online. But this is the type of old side Avengers title book that you can find. Uh, like you used to be able to find the West Coast Avengers books in the uh, dollar bins. But now a few of those have heated up thanks to WandaVision that they had, they're they not as easy to find. But Solo Avengers is a title that you can still find on the cheap if, if you dig. You know, just 
tons of these out there, but uh, definitely something interesting. So maybe take a flyer on it for cheap because, you know, again, in this story, apart from it being a team up here with Mockingbird in this issue, uh, we get just a little bit of that uh, background where, uh, you know, Clint was, uh, I think, orphaned and he was uh, joined a carnival or a circus or something. And Swordsman was a was a character there and he kind of helped train him, you know, to be get him to where he is today. Now, will they do it exactly like that on the show? I don't know. Probably not, uh, especially with the Mockingbird stuff. But uh, yeah, who knows? Who knows where they might go? But I definitely feel that we're going to get some sort of mentor relationship out, out of this. Now, whether they'll turn the mentor bad or not, you know, remains to be seen. But I, I think we're at the very least getting that, uh, you know, mentor, you know, relationship going in. I'm going to mentor this kid to the top. <laughs> but this issue also features just the kind of quick introduction to trick shot which is another villain possibility now i haven't seen any casting or rumors that he's going to be on this series or in this show but hey it's something to keep an eye on because you know how marvel has loved to do that kind of uh evil version of their characters i mean well, iron monger was just evil version you know basically of iron man you had you know yellow jacket that they made in ant-man was basically just the evil version of uh, ant-man they just kind of kept things simple in that way with abomination being the evil hulk they just wanted an equal footing, good guy, bad guy, to easily relate in that kind of first first meeting. So maybe they do something similar here and we get a, a little bit of a trick shot. I know there's other villains and things rumored for this series, but we have no idea how how deep they'll go into anything. There could be just a lot of like introductions, like maybe Kaz and that clown character, just an introduction to something we might see later down the line when uh, Kate gets her own show. I don't know. Pure speculation. But... This book, again, can be found on the cheap. It's got a couple of good, interesting things about it that make it worthwhile picking up, <clears throat> especially just for a dollar. So uh, definitely keep your eye out for it because uh, apart from the swordsman uh, swordsman training, it looks like Trick Shot had a little bit in the handling of uh, Clint's bring upbringing as well, which also could lead to some of his... Uh, I mean, he did... Hawkeye did start off as a villain, so uh, could have led to those criminal tendencies. And even in the MCU, I think they've kind of hinted at that. He hasn't had the cleanest of pasts. So... Yeah, who knows what we'll see. But so keep an eye on these solo Avengers books. Like I said, number one is a good one to look out for. And then you can see here, even on a few issues later, issue five, you get trick shot there on the cover. Uh it's kind of a older, heavier set Hawkeye look to him, but uh definitely something to keep an eye out for. So Swordsman uh is the first character that I was uh, looking at for uh yeah, for this week. And all right, for our second book, kind of piggybacking off that uh trick shot kind of line of thinking. Uh, I'm looking at Hawkeye Blind Spot number one. Uh, I mean, the whole mini series, I think it's like four issues, is probably worth grabbing if you can find them. But in this one, we actually get uh, introduced to Clint's brother, not introduced uh, for the first time, because that happened ages ago, way back in, uh, was it Mighty Avengers 64, I think, but introduced as Trick Shot. He basically becomes, you know, a villainous version, I guess, of Hawkeye. So, Brother against brother, story as old as time, you know, maybe not the most original thing in the world, but as I noted, this is not Charles Barton or uh, what do they call him? So Hawkeye blind spot number one features the introduction of Hawkeye's brother as this you know, villain trick shot. He basically takes over the mantle from the original. And uh, now this isn't Charles Barton, you know, Bucky's, not Bucky, <laughs> Clint's brother. Uh, his first appearance. His first appearance was way back in Avengers, what, Mighty Avengers 64, I believe. And then even in that issue, he was just kind of like uh, a plot device, basically, because you know, he he died uh, in that issue. So he's sacrificing himself for his brother. So he didn't have a lot of legs planned for him. And it was just kind of retcon later to kind of make and bring back, you know, Clint's brother into something. Now, I don't know if this is a way they'll go in the MCU. It's kind of convoluted. And I think it's the sort of thing they might try to avoid, but maybe they work it in a little bit differently. I don't know, but this is still an interesting issue and an interesting mini series because it just uh, introduces that again, that idea of the, uh, the flip side of the coin that uh, polar opposite to the hero. So that is something, again, the MCU has dealt with a lot uh, where you just basically have the complete opposite character as the bad guy. So it's still something that they might do uh, at some point. So something to keep an eye on. So, Hawkeye, blind spot. One, you know, all the way through four. If you find them for cheap, I'd recommend picking them up. All right. And for our next book, we know that the character of, uh, is it Maya Lopez? Uh, 
she's been cast in this series uh, as Echo. Well, I mean, we're just assuming she'll you know, show up as Echo. And uh, obviously, people have already known about this book for a while now. So that Daredevil 9, her first appearance is something that has has been pretty much picked clean. And even it's had a, its you know, reintroduction back to those cheap bins again, as Spec kind of died. It, it goes in waves. This thing, it goes back and forth. It goes around and around in a circle. So you get on the horse. It goes up and down and around. Uh, circular, circle with the music, the flow, all good things. Just always keep an eye out for it, especially when you're digging, because it's worth grabbing when you know when you find it. But chances of you find it are probably pretty slim at this point. So you can look for this you know, first Echo, but I used to have a lot of uh, success uh, finding the next issue. But we again, they cast the character. We know she's going to be on the show, but we might want to look at this issue 10 because apart from it being a little easier to find than the nine, just because everybody's grabbed the nines as the first and they didn't really care about their second. This is a great cover for her. So it's a much more engaging image than the first appearance issue. But this issue also introduced the backstory of her father, uh, crazy horse. And uh, that's kind of introduced in this story here is how he, you know, I think he was in a, not, maybe not an assassin an enforcer for uh Kingpin, Wilson Fisk, and, uh, you know, Kingpin uh, basically offed him. So she has a revenge tale of her own to be built upon. And we know that that character, Crazy Horse, her father, has also been cast uh, for this show. So maybe we see this story play out now, and this is a thread that they leave open for something more down the line for Echo. I don't know. Maybe it's just a little side story, just a little fan, um, you know, a little fan you know, nugget to put out there, a little Easter egg for people who like to pay attention. That's the only reason why they did it. Who knows? But Daredevil issue 10 is definitely one to keep an eye out for. If you can still find it, I know it's a little tough these days, but 15 is also a good one because that also goes into a bit more of that story and, and that little bit backstory of, uh, you know, her father and uh, his dealings with the uh, Kingpin a little bit there. So definitely a good run. Uh, this followed up, you know, the, uh, opening Mysterio arc from Kevin Smith when they brought, yeah, you know, when he took over Daredevil back in those Marvel Knights days. So I grabbed these issues anyway, just because it was kind of a fun run. But um, 10 and 15 are definitely issues you might be able to still find out there. So keep an eye out for them in the, uh, in the bins. All right. And for our last book, there are some more rumors that we might even get a Mockingbird appearance, you know, on this Hawkeye show. I'm not sure if they will go that route because it could really muddy the waters and make things a little bit difficult to uh, kind of fit that relationship in with you know the Hawkeye that we have. I mean, he's married with a family at this point, so kind of like an old ex-girlfriend storyline may not make a lot of sense, especially now after we saw the arc that Hawkeye went with his family, basically all being snapped and uh, getting them back. That I don't think that's a door that they really want to you know knock on right now. But hey, you never know. Maybe they leave that whole part out about any prior relationships. Maybe they're just good old friends. I don't know. But, you know, again, you're not going to find the first for a uh, Mockingbird that uh, Marvel team up uh, in, uh, in the dollar bins. I mean, if you do, you know, definitely keep an eye out for it. But just wanted to throw that out there. And uh, interesting to note that Adrian Pilecki, I believe was how you say her name. She played uh, this character on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. before they got written off to do their own spinoff show that actually never occurred. Uh, I think it was going to be called Most Wanted. And uh, unfortunately, I was kind of curious because I liked her character and I liked the uh, Jason Blood character that they were going to spin off together to do a show, but it never never panned out. So, yeah, oh well. I, I doubt that they'll bring her back since the MCU is basically just kind of writing off Coulson's crew as being sort of a separate reality. Maybe they tie some things in. Probably not. So if we do get Mockingbird, they probably will recast. But eh, just thought it was interesting to note that they had cast her before. So without the first appearance, what else could we really look at with uh, Mockingbird? I think the Hawkey, Hawkeye and Mockingbird miniseries, I think it was six, six issues back in that heroic age time frame, is a, a good uh, it's a good set to keep an eye out for. They can still be found for pretty cheap. There's some uh, pretty cool art in here and some pretty nice covers as well. I mean, apart from the cover A, there was this, uh, you know, kind of like throwback uh kind of pinup style uh, edition cover. I think this was when they were doing like Women of Marvel uh, back during that time. And this Mockingbird cover is kind of nice. So I would keep an eye out for that. I It was not a ratio variant. So it's just a, you know, a variant that may, you know, may just be out there and been. So just keep an eye out for it. And this issue also had uh, 
I believe it did have an incentive variant, but that that aside, uh, there's also a second print that is kind of interesting because you didn't see a lot of uh, new art second prints uh, back then. So just something to keep an eye out for, uh, for the cheap. I don't believe this sells for all that much right now anyway, but yeah, keep an eye out for it because, you know, who knows, especially with all the rage of this, uh, these second prints these days. And the entire uh, the entire run, like I said, has some pretty nice covers, and it kind of features the uh, villain uh, crossfire quite a bit throughout. So that is something else that I, I also find a little bit intriguing, and uh, maybe what we look at in uh, the honorable mention. So if you are watching this on my channel, I might give you a little bit more on that character uh, after we shut down here. So keep an eye out during the credits if you're watching it on my channel. But otherwise, maybe we'll get back to it when I we get back to this Hawkeye list. But again. Keep an eye out for uh, this entire run. I doubt that they'll really get into this romance aspect between the two characters because, again, I just don't think it will play very well uh, given what they've already done to Clint. But, hey, who knows? You, ne you never know what they might do. Maybe they'll find it spicy and want to want to bring that in. Ooh, another interesting confrontation. This could be spicy. Yeah, George, bring them over. So keep an eye out for that set as well. Who knows what they might do? It's just something to... Uh, yeah, something you might be able to still find for cheap because finding cheap books these days, especially with Marvel uh, speculation, is not the easiest thing to do as uh, instant alerts and notifications going out get people clearing out all the online places and all the shops near you pretty quickly uh, these days. Even shops themselves start pulling from their own stock. But, you know, sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you do get uh, things that just you know, people just don't bother digging that, for, that far into the dollar bins. I don't know how they are near you, but they are could be pretty daunting if somebody wants to dig through a uh, completely uh, unorganized bit of books, the unbagged and unboard and with no rhyme nor reason. So you might get lucky if you're patient and uh, have a keen eye. So with that said, we're just going to wrap up here for this week. Thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe to my channel as well as Tales from the Flip Side. Please read the article over on comicbookinvest.com where I'll give you some of the more recent sales information on these uh, books so you can see what exactly what we're talking about here. And uh, hopefully you're enjoying this. I still got some more stuff coming over you know, the next foreseeable future basically i don't plan on stopping doing this anytime soon so hopefully you're liking it and uh please let me know down in the comments and i will see you guys all next time